I want you to imagine unlocking the secrets of your mind to transform your life and business. Today, we're diving into something amazing, the triune brain theory. Have you ever wondered how our brains can make us succeed and fail in every single aspect of life? Well, get ready because we're about to reveal the hidden powers within your brain and how you can use them to become absolutely unstoppable. Picture this, your brain is like a three-layered cake. Each layer is packed with unique abilities. And in so today's video, I'm gonna break down each of these layers, showing you how to harness them to excel in both personal and professional parts of your life. First up, we have this thing called the reptilian brain. It's the oldest and most primal part of us. It's about survival, instincts, and most importantly, keeping us safe. Then we move on to the limbic system, our emotional powerhouse. This brain helps us form connections, feel empathy, and build relationships. It also helps us decide who we vote for and if you're an Android user or an Apple user. And finally, we have the neocortex. This is the most advanced layer of our brain, responsible for logic, creativity, and even innovation. Now, some of you might know that the triune brain theory was actually debunked in the 1990s, but here's the thing. While it may not be literally accurate, it's incredibly powerful as a metaphor. It helps us understand the complex ways that our brain works and how we can tap into its full potential. I mean, isn't that really what we're after anyways? So please stick around because I'm gonna show you how understanding these layers can help make you a better decision maker, help you lead with more confidence and absolutely crush it in business. Let's get started. What I'm gonna run through is this theory called the triune brain theory, developed by Dr. Paul McLean. He was a director of the National Institute of Mental Health. To what he was saying was that we had three different brain systems. And if you've heard of like the lizard brain or the reptilian brain or sort of the primitive nature, that's where that comes from. And so a lot of work and a lot of research was done on understanding that you guys run businesses, run families and live a life. And your goal is to be able to apply science to be able to find more success, more money, better relationships, better health. Let's take a look at this brain. What it's saying in this is that everything that we see, we touch, we smell, we taste, we hear, whether it's through our, our nose, whether it's through our eyes, whether we feel it on our skin and our ears, all of that information is routed through our brainstem. That's a really critical piece of information. It doesn't enter the brain up here. No, it's all routed to the brainstem. So in essence, it follows this pattern, if you will. And so we have to really follow the sequence of how things work. Because that pattern works that way, I want to sort of evolve and, and create this. You believe in evolution, this is how we evolved. It started in with this brainstem, but it's also, if you look at an embryo in the, the womb, the first part of the brain is this thing called the reptilian brain. Now the reptilian brain is in charge of all your autonomic functions your breathing, your heart rate, your digestion, all the things that need to happen for you to survive. And so because it carries that burden of survival, it also carries another authority, which is full control. And it's given three tools, the fight, flight, freeze, response. So those three elements there, if it's, it's let's say you're threatened with a bear in the woods, you're either going to run for your life, fight for your life, or hold still and maybe the bear won't see you. The way that that measures that is through this thing called the reticular activating system. I write in detail about this in my book. The reticular activating system, or the RAS, is really a radar. And it really determines what we pay attention to. In a lot of sales environments, the, the term RAS is used because that's where branding comes into play. That's where we really start being top of mind awareness. A real simple example would be is if you ever bought a car and you thought you were the only one with that car, you were so excited, the color and the make of the model, and you get off the lot and all of a sudden you start seeing that same damn car everywhere. And you're thinking, thinking to yourself, but I thought I was the only one that had this thing. You just now are paying attention to them. You have a category that's ready and paying attention in your visual field where before you didn't have a category, it didn't have relevancy. So your selective attention didn't choose to pay attention to it and it went away. This also plays into people that are pessimists and optimists. A pessimist is going to constantly look for the negative and the reticular activity system is going to point out all the negative things that are happening. And lo and behold, wow, because it points out all the negative things, they start constructing a reality that seems to be negative versus the optimist might see opportunity everywhere. And all of a sudden they start constructing a reality of opportunity and positivity. Understanding how we construct reality is a very, very important part of this process. The reticular activating system actually looks at, more importantly, stress says, okay, let's measure stress on a scale of one to 10. And 10 being death, if it measures a level 10 death stress, it has the ability to shut off cortical access to anything higher in the brain. And so all sugar is now beginning to be metabolized at our primitive level. The reptilian brain is, they call it reptilian because reptiles have this brain. Reptiles are pre-verbal. There's no language centers. There's no bonding. Have you ever seen uh, reptiles bond? No, they work individually. Thank God I can separate them out and I only have to take one at a time. But if they were working as teams, woo wee, that'd be scary. They don't have connections. They don't have the ability to care. So when we are under this level 10 stress, we take on a lot of those same attributes. We don't listen the same. Words don't calm us down. 
Think about your spouse and maybe they're upset and you say, honey, let's think rationally about this. Does that work? No, it doesn't work. On this primitive side of us, we don't have logic language. We don't have any of the things that make us human. And so when we are in and under a lot of stress, we are in what we call reptilian brain. Another way of saying that is system one. And so now, as we begin to evolve, we get into this next part of the brain called the limbic system. And uh, the limbic system has three major functions. One, it's the place where we have our emotions. It's also the home of our value center. And it's a gateway to long-term memory, LTM. And so think about how powerful this part of the brain is for a minute. It's our emotions, our values, and long-term memory. This is how we decide what we remember. That's kind of critical. If you need referrals, you want a brand, you want to be remembered, top of mind awareness, memory is huge here. Your first kiss, when your baby was born, all those things are memories. This is a critical part of the brain. But our values, think of how powerful our values are and emotions. And this part of the brain has 35,000 times more neurons that fire when we make a decision versus our logical centers. If you don't believe me, have you ever seen somebody in love with the wrong person? This is the same part of the brain that chooses Android versus iPhone. It's very, very powerful. And when you're selling something or persuading or getting somebody to make a big decision, you have to overcome this part of the brain and trigger it and get it on your side. It is just power, not good or bad. It's just power. So this is the part of the brain that Hitler tapped into, that Fidel Castro tapped into, but also Gandhi and Nelson Mandela. And so you have to be able to understand when I'm dealing with another human, whether from stage in a group one-on-one, -on -one, a child, this is what they're functioning. If we're going to the next piece, we're gonna get into this blue area, which makes up about 80% of our brain. It's called the neocortex. Learning, logic, language, problem solving, all the things that sort of make us human. This is the wrinkles in the brain. All that wrinkly gray matter is really what makes us human. The challenge though, with this part of the brain is that it's a slave to the reptilian brain. Meaning, if for some reason stress is happening, we shut off this, that means that we don't get access to language, learning, and logic. We don't get access to our values and emotions. Imagine dealing with somebody that isn't there. You ever tried to sell a product or communicate something that you knew was really good for them and they just weren't paying attention? That's because they were in reptilian. They didn't trust. But what about connection versus data and information? I said, well, this, we have to follow the sequence of the brain to be able to really truly hone in on what's going on. That's about the connection and building trust. For us to be able to do that, we have to be able to answer a question. If we want access to these parts of the brain and bring them back to life, there's a test that each of these brains asks. You have to be able to answer each one of those questions to be able to go further through it. And so the good news is that each one of those questions is only one question. And so the reptilian brain is very selfish and it asks the question of it's focused on the I. Am I safe? Meaning three things, structure, order, predictability, SOP. Those are the things that really create safety. And now we're talking about psychological safety because this was designed for physical safety. That trumps everything else because your first goal of the brain is to survive and the reptilian brain is in charge of that. It hits all of your autonomic systems and your adrenaline. It just takes over and it can be taking over your body before you're even consciously aware of it for up to five to seven seconds. And then you're consciously aware that you're defensive. The limbic system asks the question of, do you care? Now it's about us. Reptilian is about me. These are the gatekeepers. If I know that I don't feel safe and you don't care about me, I'm not moving forward. I don't care how many techniques for influence I teach you. If you haven't made me feel safe and shown that you care, I'm not buying what you're selling or talking about. I'm not following you anywhere. Am I safe? Do you care? The next one. Only humans have this blue area. So we ask the question, is this interesting? I mean, we can put our attention on anything we want, but is this interesting? Does it capture my attention? So I want you guys to pay attention to what it is that I'm saying. Just focus on me. Don't worry about the picture right now, okay? Don't worry about the picture. Why do you guys keep staring at the picture? Well, the reason you do is because it's moving. It's a fluctuating stimuli. And it creates novelty, which secretes dopamine, which captures your attention. And the last part, this prefrontal lobe, the last part of the brain to develop, doesn't fully develop till age 25. They also call it the CEO of the brain, the future simulator. Ask this question of, is this inspiring? It's what we call the future simulator. And so how does the future simulator work? I want you to think about this for a minute. Ben and Jerry's just came out with a new ice cream and it's flavored liver and onions. How many of you had a visceral response of that's disgusting? The reality is you didn't even taste it, but you responded as if you did. Your future simulator went out into the future, put those ingredients together, pulled from your past experience to give you a visceral response to tell you if this was something you wanted to do or not. This is happening all the time with every decision that we make. How do I create safety? How do I show people that I care? How do I make this truly engaging and appealing like all of these colors? That's one way. And then how do I inspire people to take action? What I want you guys to really walk away with on this is that there is a process to this. There's a science and there's a way to do this. In the session we've talked, I've shared with you a proven formula, a process and a methodology that I've spent years refining. And the hope, the goal is that it's been resulting for our clients in massive success.
Now you possess that formula and all the immense power that it holds. You now have the knowledge to wield influence in a way that surpasses most others, captivating people's attention and driving them to take action. That's the goal of all of this. I hope today I unveil the secrets of influence 